Hey all, good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, God. Um, hoping you will sing with me this morning. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down. I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, mothers, let's go down. Down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, learners, let's go down. Let's go down. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I Precious love, lead me home. When the day grows dream, precious love, linger near when my life is on. Take my hand, precious love. Lead me home when the darkness appears and the storm draws near and the day. 
day is past and gone. Am I at the river stand? Got my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious love. Like a night in the forest Like the mountains in springtime Like a walk in the rain Like a storm in the desert Like a sleepy blue ocean You fill up my senses, come fill me again, come let me love you, let me give my life to you, let me drown in your blessing, let me die Let me lay down beside those, those grace-filled still waters. Come, let me love you. Come, love me again. You fill up my senses like a night. Like the mountains in springtime, like a walk in the rain, like a storm in the desert, like a sleepy blue ocean. You fill up my senses, come fill me. Mari will be preaching today on thin places, sacred places in our lives, individually and communally. This song is called Holy Ground. Please sing along, you all. We are standing on holy Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in His presence on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know Welcome to worship. 
with Whitefish United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Maury Adams Griffin, and I am grateful that you are choosing to join with us in this worship. Church is changing. We don't know what it will look like, but we definitely know that it's probably not going back to normal. You are part of that as you tune in to these worship experiences online. I want to want you to know that you're part of our congregation. And what I'm hoping is that we can figure out how to be a long distance congregation, but still supporting each other in very real ways. One of the ways that we can do that is sharing our prayer concerns. If you have any prayer concerns you want to lift up to the community, we send those out every Monday morning through our email. So you would need to be added to the email. Power of prayer is really important for us. So we invite God into our lives through prayer and we invite one another into our lives through prayer. You can also make suggestions if you would like to uh, be part of a study group or a small group. We can figure out how to do a Zoom group. Maybe it's a support group or like I said, a study group, a book study, a Bible study. I'm more than happy to facilitate those kinds of things. Most likely we would want to receive that information and start to plan for the fall as we approach uh, mid-July now and we can make that happen and start to build a new kind of church where we can still be called into discipleship and service and we can still be together in some way, shape, or form. So I invite you to consider that. Let us begin worship with this opening prayer. Will you pray with me? God invites us to gather. We worship the Holy One who is present in all. God invites us to come as we are for the sake of who we may yet be. We worship the Holy One who calls us to new ways of being and doing. God invites us to journey in awe and in trust. We worship the Holy One in our midst who blesses and commissions us for the good of all. Let us worship. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. You can find this in the faith we sing um, on page 2218. It is called, You Are Mine. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fears. Do not 
Our scripture today comes from the book of Genesis in the 28th chapter, verses 10 through the first part of 19. Listen for God's word as it speaks to you today. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give you, and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring." Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this 
place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to be in an attitude of prayer with me. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. It is in your holy name we pray. Amen. I have a sacred place in my life, and it's called Flathead Lake. I didn't really spend much time growing up near Flathead or on Flathead Lake until about seventh grade when I started going to our Methodist church camp outside of Rollins on the West Shore. This place became sacred to me, of course, for its beauty and for the community that I was interacting with as I participated in church camp. There was something quite powerful that started to change my life, and that's what made it sacred. One of the people that I met going to that church camp was my now wife, Erin. We've known each other that long, established a wonderful friendship with each other through that community, through that place. A couple of years ago, I was down at the camp helping with a five-day spiritual academy in those academies, they offer lots of time to just be for prayer and reflection. During one of those times, it was a beautiful early September day. I was sitting by the lake. It was just gorgeous. And I took a picture of the water on the shoreline there. And I wrote this on a Facebook post. I deepen my relationship with God here and it keeps me going. I deepened my relationship with my wife here, and it keeps me going. Sacred waters, sacred relationships, sacred life. This passage that we hear from the book of Genesis is about Jacob experiencing such sacredness, experiencing God in a way that he cannot help but want to mark that place as holy and sacred. For Jacob, this became a sacred place because of this dream, this vision he had while he rested his head on a rock for a pillow. This vision he had was a promise, a promise by God that Jacob would find security and protection and well-being, life abundant through his family. As it says, your descendants will number the grains of sand. Sometimes God does speak to us through a dream, a vision, whether sleeping or awake. In fact, these past few days, I was on a float trip with some high school friends of mine, and the last day, I was talking to them about where I was going with my message, and one of my friends shared a story of his three-year-old son at the time that this happened. His three-year-old went into a diabetic coma, and while he was under, of course, the parents are uh, fearful about what might come. But he recovered. He came out of that. And when he did, they asked him, do you remember anything of what happened while you were sleeping? And he said, yeah. This three-year-old boy said, yeah. Jesus came and walked around with me and then, and then took me and flew me around. And then he set me down and he looked at me and said, 
you will be okay. How else do we share with people than telling our story? To tell our story of when we experience the sacredness, to mark it by the story of telling people. We may want to make that place somehow like Jacob does, mark it maybe with a rock and oil like he does, but sharing with the world our experience and our story is so important about the sacredness of our, the places we encounter, the holy. Sometimes those sacred places make themselves known to us, almost like our sixth sense kicking in, becoming acutely alive, and we find ourselves hyper-aware of what's happening, overcome with a sense of the holy, of God's presence with us, among us, and around us. Mahatma Gandhi, in his spiritual message to the world in 1931, speaks of this. He said, there is an indefinable, mysterious power that pervades everything. I feel it, though I do not see it. It is this unseen power that makes itself felt and yet defies all proof. Because it is so unlike all that I perceive through my senses, it transcends the senses. Now many traditions honor these kinds of places with shrines or monuments, maybe a church, a mosque, a synagogue, or even leaving that place unadulterated, pristine, and pure. The Celtic people of Ireland are understood to have honored places like this all over the country. They referred to these as thin places. One website entitled Thin Places Mystical Tours. If you ever want to tour Ireland and see these places, you can go to this group of people. But on their website, they write, thin, thin places are places of energy, a place where the veil between this world and the eternal world is thin. A thin place is where one can walk in two worlds. The worlds are fused together knitted loosely where the differences can be discerned or tightly where the two worlds become one. Thin places aren't perceived with the five senses. Experiencing them goes beyond those limits. Now this past week I asked people, do you have a sacred place in your life, a thin place? where you just sense God's presence. And I ask people to send in a story or a picture or a video, anything where they thought there was a thin place in their life. We had a few people send in some photographs with a brief description for them what that place is like. The first one was Kathy Bechtel. Thank you, Kathy. She sent in two pictures. One was of Whitefish Lake, and she says this about this place. A feeling of calm and peace fills me. The other picture she sent in was from Two Medicine, and she writes of her and Jerry, her spouse, our most spiritual place. Another person, Chris Stanley, sent in also two pictures, as each of these three people did. The first was a sunrise on Atlantic Beach, Florida, where she lives part of the year. And she writes, This is my moment where time seems to stand still and take a deep breath before a new day. 
peace. The other picture she sent in was also a sunrise, but in whitefish. And she writes, another place, but same special sunrise, a new day. The last one was Deb Bond, sent in two pictures also, one of Saya Pass in Glacier, and the other, an autumn hike around Woods Lake behind my house. She writes, Any time I am out in nature, I feel joyful, grateful, and more connected to everyone in the world, and my burdens are lifted. Closer to God, I suppose. These moments of feeling close to God, connected to all of creation, or just a little bit closer to heaven, as we might say, can also come in the form of community. That's what I heard when my friend Jen Foy sent in a message to me on my Facebook post referring to a thin place she experienced. She writes, I have had the opportunity to worship with people from around the world. And one of those experiences was praying with a group of refugees from a variety of nations. In those prayers, I understood little or nothing of the words, which would seem hard to engage in worship. But in some way, we all understood one another. I have to imagine that what I experienced that day is similar to what heaven is like. Passionate believers from all tribe and tongue gathered in joyful worship. I want to share one last story about somebody experiencing sacredness, thin places in the midst of relating to others, maybe even strangers. This comes from Aaron Ramsey Tour from a website, God in All Things. Ramsey Tour writes, these days I spend about half of each week in my role as a social worker at one of Boston's largest teaching hospitals. Specifically, I work with survivors of interpersonal violence, sexual assault, domestic violence, community violence, and other types of abuse. The people with whom I meet, whether for ongoing therapy or for a one-time consult, have been through some of the most painful experiences of human life. Like Jesus, when he appeared to his apostles after the resurrection, many of them continued to bear marks of their suffering weeks, months, and years after the experiences of abuse they endured. In my office, or in the hospital rooms or emergency department beds in which I meet them, they find the courage to open up to a stranger, to allow me to bear witness to their stories. And when I enter someone's room to find them lying, often alone in a paper-thin robe in a hospital bed, or when someone bravely enters my office and begins to tell the story of their suffering and their survivorship, I can't help but believe over and over that I am on holy ground. She goes on to write, The ancient Celts had a name for those rare locales where the distance between heaven and earth collapses. They held that in most places, heaven and earth are only three feet apart. Yet in thin places, that distance is even smaller. In thin places, the veil between heaven and earth is lifted, the sacred touches the mundane. And even for a moment, we see clearly. 
we touch heaven. And so today, as we hear the stories of others, I want you to consider your stories where you have been in the midst of sacred places, thin places. And to encourage you that when you do experience those, to pause, to pause and notice, become more aware, to take in what's happening and the wisdom that is imparted to you in those moments. To pay close attention with your sixth sense, because I believe that sixth sense, that spiritual sense, can be powerful and life-transforming, as it tells us who God is and what God is up to in our lives and in all of creation. Because like Jacob, I believe through those thin places, we have the opportunity to hear the promise to us and all of creation for security and protection and well-being and life abundantly. Thanks be to God for the opportunity to be God's people. Amen. After Jacob got up early in the morning, he took the stone that he had put near his head, set it up as a sacred pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. Oil has long traditions of use for healing. We pour this oil on the stone to remind us that this, too, is the house of God. As we bring our prayers for healing, know that the oil is here. God is here. For all who struggle with grief or fear, anger or pain, hear our prayers. For all who face a crossroads, a time of choosing, Hear our prayers. For all who find it hard to come into the presence of God, or who have found the church non-receptive and ungracious, hear our prayers. For all on journeys home, for all setting out on new ways, for all who feel trapped and unable to move, hear our prayers. May the Spirit be poured on us all. Amen.
peace all. Have a great week. We have come to this place of worship, but we do not stay here. Like Jacob, the journey continues. Like Jacob, holy presence accompanies us. And like Jacob, God calls us into new life. Amen and peace be with you.